Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, this is Lycus1985. This is a video response to the review spots question that he asked. He says, the great debate number two, what point of articulation, aside from the most basic five, is important to you? Now, he defines the basic five as a swivel at the head, a swivel like that in both arms, and a swivel at both hips or legs. Very basic, the five basic ones. Uh, so he asked beyond that, what, what's most important to you? Well, I'm going to break it down into categories. I'm going to, I'm going to start with you know, action figures, then move on to Gundam, and then finally touch on Transformers, because they all have different criteria in my mind, in my opinion. So starting with action figures, which includes Marvel Legends, DC Universe, Star Wars, G.I. Joe, blah, blah, blah. So beyond the five basic points of articulation that uh, the, re the review spot mentions, I really look for double jointed elbows, uh, ab articulation, uh, double jointed knees is very cool and very important for me, uh, of course ankle articulation, and the foot articulation probably is one of the key ones because what you can do is you can get the foot in kind of a bend, you know, like a, like a kneeling position like that, and the foot part of it bends so that it you know, conforms to that position, which is good. Uh, I do like in the arm that how how they do have the uh, swivel at the bite uh, you know the the upper arm is like that that's really cool I don't know if that's critical for me but it's nice to have um, in this example uh, the other thing I should mention that, that's most important to me is finger articulation especially in the case of figures like Deadpool which have weapons coming out of the wazoo um, you got to have oh you don't have to but it's nice to have you know finger articulation this guy has his four fingers on a, on a joint here, as you can see. Um, wrist articulation, in this case, is like this, uh, but you can move the arm to kind of position the wrist like that, so, you know, wrist, is, wrist articulation is nice as well. Now, let me go into what I absolutely don't get as far as why do you have a certain point of articulation other than the fact that you can count it as a point of articulation. One of the examples I have in one of my rants that I have with these figures. Why do you need waist articulation? Why do you need 360 waist articulation? Uh, to go just left and right like this is just fine with me, you know, not just very slightly. Let me give you an example of an extreme example of what I think is just wrong. So we have Marvel Legends Juggernaut. This dude can go 360. Uh, he also ha can, you know, kind of do that thing. But when you get him to the point where you're doing a, you know, a 180 or whatever, uh, you can see see this. This is part of his waist, and it's like a like a big thing hanging off there. WTF? WTF? What is that? Why? Why? Why do we have that? I really don't get it. Um, you know, why do we need that 360 rotation in the waist? It's not really critical. If he just looks like this to the to the left and like this to the right, that's all I need. Just my opinion. Now, uh, going on to other points of articulation that may not be necessary, that I think are kind of um, redundant or not necessary. Uh, if you take female action figures, here we have Marvel Legends Electra. Now, obviously, she's got a lot of bare skin, and that means she's showing her joints. You can see here the joints. And while those joints are nice, and while they are double-jointed, which is good, it doesn't always work out well with female action figures with their bare, you know, bare flesh to have these joints showing. So I, I, I would almost say, in the case of some of the, you know, female action figures, less is more when it comes to articulation. Less articulation is better because you have less joints, um, you know, showing on the bare skin color. You know, now, you know, if she's totally costumed and everything, I think that works out better. I think like there's like Marvel Legends. Uh, black widow, I think, and she's like in a, you know from neck to to ankle in a black you know tight fitting outfit. And that kind of works because it's not her skin that's showing the articulation joint; it's actually her costume. Okay, so enough of that. Uh, you know what I don't like about uh, articulation in action figures, but you get an idea of what I look for. Uh, Gundam. This applies to Master Grade Gundam model kits as well as the Mobile Suit in Action. Uh, of the recent years. What I look for in Gundam is, uh, you know, some, some, some of the same. I, want, I look for a double jointed elbow. 
I look for individually articulated fingers so that they can hold their weapons without having to take their hand apart. And anybody, anybody who knows about model kits will know what I'm talking about. Uh, waist articulation actually is kind of important to me. I like that degree of articula articulation like that. I really don't need more than that. If it can look left and right, that's fine for me. Uh, of course, uh, you want to have double jointed uh, knees like that. And actually, this probably can go up farther. There you go. And again, the foot articulation is, is important as well, like that. Now, there is a case where ab articulation does help as well. Um, here's the tier and ground type 1 to 100 model kit. And just to dem demonstrate real quickly, he can actually articulate like this. And that's kind of nice. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's kind of interesting as, as well. So, and moving on finally to, to transformers and, and, and how, I, how I think about articulation to transformers. Well, you have a range of transformers. You have these big universe uh, Voyager size class figures. And this guy has articulation like this. Uh, he can bend at the elbow. Um, his wrists swivel partially due to the transformation. He has no waist articulation. Uh, you know, his legs can go out like this on ratchets, go forward, go back, um, bend at the knee, although that's also part of the transformation. That's just fine. He's a, he's a big guy. He, you know, he, doesn't have to have a lot of, he doesn't have to have a lot of articulation to make me happy. This is just fine with me as far as um, a range of articulation. You know, he's quite limited as compared to an action figure, but hey, you know, he's a big transforming robot. What do you expect? Uh, I don't expect a lot of, as far as articulation. I'm, I'm happy because he's a cool transformer. Now, take a, another smaller transformer, a classic uh, like deluxe size figure like Mirage here. Here, you have ball jointed shoulders. You have double jointed uh, elbow section, but that's partially due to the transformation, but you, you, nonetheless, you have it. Uh, you got, uh, I guess you don't have swivel in the wrist so much here, but uh, going down to the hip area, or the waist area, you do have waist articulation, again, for the transformation, but then you got these nice ball jointed hips. You know, you can go like back, forward, uh, it's kind of a double joint here, not really, but you can kind of get his knee. So you could do a you know a kneeling pose pretty easily with this figure. Uh, you know, you can, it's it's got a wide range of articulation. So it, it really for transformers, I think it depends on the size of the of the transformer, and you know, um, like I said, I wouldn't expect a Voyager class transformer to have quite as much articulation as a smaller deluxe sized uh, figure. Now, to use an extreme example, going back even farther in, in the articulation range, whoops, uh, Generation 1 Mirage. So he's got arm articulation like that, no head articulation whatsoever. The head does not swivel at all, it's just, it's just part of this piece here. Uh, no, well, he's got waist articulation, but no bending at the knee, the, the legs are, you know, are together, they can't move separately, there's no, there's no joint at the hips. You know, very basic basic articulation, but does that mean I don't like him? Absolutely not, because this guy came from the 80s. I was a kid in the 80s. I like him despite the articulation. Generation one, yeah. So that's my take on articulation. As you can see, it varies depending on whether I'm looking at an action figure or a Gundam model kit or a Transformer. So it really depends on what I'm what I'm talking about, what I'm looking at. Uh, anyhow, this has been my video response to the review spots question, the great debate number two, what point of articulation aside from the five most basic ones are important to you? Thanks for watching.